First Kings chapter 8 verse 22 we put the ark in the most holy place we have a little sermon by Solomon now we're going to look at his prayer of dedication of the temple and the ark of the covenant being where it should be Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the congregation of Israel now stood now later on it's going to say he got up that's no difficulty. He started standing up and he ended up on his knees. All the congregation of Israel. Israel. A Jewish temple. And spread forth his hands towards heaven. And you've seen the gesture, hands straight out. And he said, Lord God of Israel. First words out of the prayer is recognizing God, Jehovah, and of Israel. There is no God like thee. So there's no God like thee. There's got to be God. God is the God of gods. And yet he's one God. All the other gods are Satan. Just manifested in different things that people want their gods to be. But there are the gods. In heaven above. God's in heaven. On the earth beneath. He's in the earth. And beneath the earth. All in all, who keepeth covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all thy heart. So if you walk before the Lord properly, you do what you're supposed to do. God will be with you. It's the moment that we sin. It's the moment that we step out from what we're supposed to be doing. And go the way that's not of God. And God's like, he stays, he stops. You want to go on that path? I'll wait right here. If you're going to continue to walk with me, what I tell you to do, how I tell you to do it, let's go. A lot of people think that when they venture off the road, oh, God's walking with them. Well, Christian and, and faith will find out when they go off to the, uh, to the castle there, they, they walk off the path, God ain't with them. Pilgrim's Progress. Ex excellent book to read along with your Bible. And Solomon is going to walk the way of sin. For all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. Who has kept with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised, that's the first time promised shows up. And God keeps his promises. God is not ever going to promise something he can't promise. You say, well, there are things that he said he's going to do he hasn't finished yet. That promise is a prophecy. It will yet happen. Thou speakest also with thy mouth. God has a mouth. Idols have mouth, but they don't speak. Statues have mouth, but they don't speak. And has fulfilled it with thy hand, the mighty hand of God, as it is this day. So God is faithful. God will do. God is powerful. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel... That's important. We're dealing with Jews. We're dealing with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the 12 tribes. There's no church. Keep with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him. I thought David's dead. Did not the Sadducees come up and say, Well, this man and this woman has seven uh, husbands, their brothers, and in, in the death, Whose wife, I mean, who's, yeah, whose wife should she be? And Jesus says, God is the God of the living, not of the dead. David, though his body is sleeping, though he may be in Abraham's bosom, but he has the sure mercies of God like Solomon, he's just asleep, but he's not dead. He's asleep. He will be resurrected. That thou promised him, saying, there shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel. All right? Ever since Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar sacked and destroyed Jerusalem, the temple, the kingdoms, the homes, brought the unit, I mean, brought the servants and the families of the kings to Babylon. There has not been a king in Israel. And yet Solomon says, Thou shalt not fail thee a man in my sight, God's sight, 
to sit on the throne of Israel. How can that be fulfilled if there has been no king yet? Jesus Christ is right there. God's looking at Jesus. Oh, is he the king? Oh, yeah, he's the king. Even Pilate nailed up above his head, not on a stake, but on the cross, nailed above his head, the king of the Jews. So, God fulfills his word, even though Israel, their king, sinned. And God says, i got to get rid of it. There will be no king prophecy in the days of the Messiah when he comes. There will be no kings in the days of the church age. There is their king sitting right there, and God sees him, and always sees him. So that thy children take heed to their way, which they won't, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. They won't. All have sinned, come short of the glory of God. And now, O God of Israel, if we got time, I'm going to show you a verse in the New Testament, but God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified. Why? Does Solomon have 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Song? Does he even have his Proverbs yet? No. Does he have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Act? No. The Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 111 or 11, 1, Jews require a sign. Solomon does not have a complete Bible as we have today. And then Matthew says, go out, you'll be able to drink the, the venom of snakes, and you'll heal, the you'll heal the sick and raise the dead. These signs will be following you to confirm the word. And what Solomon is asking, what the Jews require, since Moses came to the Jews in Exodus, saying, hey, look, watch the water turn to blood, watch the rod become a snake, watch my hand become leprous. Those are signs. Jews require a sign. And Solomon, who has what he has up to now as far as the scriptures, he's supposed to write them. We don't know if he did. Lord God, confirm everything that you said. Where we are right now is this exactly what you have fulfilled to my, my dad, my father, David. Am I doing what you want me to do? Confirm it. I have no right to do that today. You say, how do I verify God in my life today? I open up the pages in the Bible and I study. Now, if i got a modern Bible, they don't tell me to study. You can do whatever you want in a modern Bible. But the King James Bible, believe in Christian, I am saved under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, new birth. I am to look at, can I lie? Search the scriptures about lying. Nope, John 8, 44. If I lie, I follow Satan. Even if I tell a cute little lie and just tell jokes and get laughed, it's still a, a Satan. I'm not to lie. I have a complete Bible script. Why can't I go out and heal people? Why can't I go out there and get bit by snakes and shake them off in the fire like Paul did? Because I and the people around me that I am witnessing to and dealing with and teaching, we have a completed Bible. And we can study the Bible. You don't see anywhere it says study in the Old Testament. The priests, the Levites, had the word of God. Man, they did this in a few nights. This is just remarkable prayer. It teaches much. Verify which thou spakest unto my servant David, my father. Well, isn't the temple there? Is not the Ark of the Covenant there? Did not the cloud just show up, Solomon? He's making sure. He's verifying for God we are doing right. Did you ask God about that wife you married in a pharaoh? Did you ask God about those horses that you got? Did you ask God about going back to Egypt? The scriptures say. But will God indeed dwell in the earth? What's the answer to that? 33 and a half years. God dwelt on the earth. 1,000 years. God will dwell on the earth. Question that is Solomon? That's prophecy. Yes. Job said, God, do you have eyes like I do? Do you feel like I do? Yes. Jesus Christ. God, through Jesus Christ, answered Job's plea and answered Solomon's thing. The Bible records that Jesus slept. Jesus was tired. Jesus got woke up in the middle of a storm. They didn't listen to the word of God. He said, we're going to go to the other side. Oh, God. Jesus, we're going to die. And then the next chapter opens up, verse 1. They went to the other side. They didn't listen. 
We'll get to that, Lord willing, one day maybe. So indeed, dwell on the earth. Yes, Jesus Christ. Behold the heaven, one. And heaven, two. And heavens cannot contain thee. God is so magnificent, so wonderful. God's a spirit. They that must worship him must worship in spirit and truth. God dwells in all. Yeah, that thing, you know, God's in the trees, God's in the rock. God, yes, he's everywhere. But you're not to worship the trees, you're not worship the rock. You're to worship the God, the creator of all that, not the creation, Romans chapter 1. And the heaven and earth cannot contain. That's the first time that word shows up. And let me make a little note about sometimes these words show up. We have found some places they've been wrong. And it's an online program I found. And it's not the Bible. It's like Pilgrim's Progress. It's not the Bible. There are errors. I may miss some. And there may be errors. But I'm trying the best we can for study. Contain thee. You cannot put God in a box. And when I grew up in a, in a religion of Catholic, at that time in the Mass, they would bring Jesus in the box and open it up. And when they were done, they would close the box. That's not my God. You know, Jesus Christ was in a body of flesh as Adam, and yet he's still seated on the throne. He was still in the hearts of the Pharisees when they were mumbling against him. I heard that. Mighty God. How much less this house that I have. Now look at this old tiny house. Alright. We got this thing rolling around. This space thing that people are living in. Forget that. Let's go to, to the moon where God created. And at the moon I want you to look at the earth. And I want you to point to, to Jerusalem. When it comes around. You can't. You work. Of all the vast that God has created the universe. God. Solomon is saying this little place here. And you're going to dwell amongst Israel here. Of all the places, if a Jewish person comes to you, to this temple, to this place to worship you, you're going to be there. Of all the places you can be, if a Jewish Israelite wants to get right, you'll be there. Day of atonement, you'll be at that mercy seat to receive that blood. Glory to God. Yet, have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant. This is Solomon. And to his supplication. Lord God listen to me. Hear me. O oh Lord my God. O oh Lord my God. You don't want me to start singing. To hearken unto the cry. And to the prayer. Which thy servant prays before thee today. Look at prayer. Prayer. Supplication. supplication. Lord God hear me. Hear me Lord. It's not that God is deaf, but it's an anxious prayer. It's a verily, verily, it's important, God, that thy eyes, we have a God that has eyes, may be open toward this house, night and day. Huh? We have a God that can see at night. He don't need no special vision glasses or binoculars. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. Even towards this place, of which thou hast said, My name, Jehovah, shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. So the Queen of Sheba comes. I've heard of your wisdom. I've heard the might of your God. Give me more. The Ethiopian eunuch comes to Jerusalem to worship the God of that place. We want to hear more. Jesus Christ is preached from the temple after his ascension in the book of Acts. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That name is Jesus. That name of Jesus was in that temple physical. God. And that name of Jesus was preached from the temple. And went out. Samaria. I mean, Judea and Samaria. And the outer parts of the world. And hearken thou to the supplication. Of thy servant. Look at, look at Solomon. He's saying my, thy servant. Thy servant. Lord God whatever you do. He's the king. He's got servants. He's got people to take care of his cows. People to take care of his plants. Remember the book of uh, Ecclesiastes? He's got plants. He's got orchards. He's got everything. He's got musicians. And all those servants that he got, he shows up to God and says, what if you tell me, God, do it? 
There are people today, Christian, oh, I'm a servant of God. And God says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Oh, I won't do that. I'll just let my light shine. That's not a servant. A servant will do what God tells them to do. A servant will do what a man that's over them tells them what to do. Servant today is a four-letter word. Because how dare you mention the word servant in slavery? It's not the same. Though I am bought with a price. And of thy people, Israel, again, when they shall pray towards this place. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we, we got a miscommunication here. We got a trouble with religion. To Israel, Solomon, as he dedicates his temple, he says, when the Jews pray to this place, Lord, as Daniel's in Babylon, and he's in captivity, he opens up his window and looks towards where Jerusalem would be, and he prays to God three times a day, and the religions get in there, pray to Mecca, pray to this place, pray to this place, and the woman in John chapter 4 says, Jesus, we pray in this place, and you pray in this place, and Jesus said, you know, one day, it's not going to be the place. It's going to be the person. It's going to be here. The Jews are required to play wherever they are to pray towards that temple. That is a center of worship. That is not a religion. That is God Jehovah. That is where the God of the Bible is. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And other religions imitate that by having their meccas wherever they pray to. And God does not honor that. God does not allow that. That's Satan. And hear thou in heaven. Thy dwelling place. I have the God that's in heaven dwelling. Kind of packed when you got the gods of India. They got many gods, multiple gods, they believe in gods, all kinds of gods, the gods, God, 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 God. Where do they all live? Must be a packed place. You know it's so packed that if, if you don't have good karma, I read the other day, you can come back as a cockroach because heaven's packed with all the God, 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 God. And you could be in Utah, United States, and the place is so packed, you got to have babies so you can plant it on other planets. I'm going to heaven. I'm going, the Bible says, as a Christian, to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, one God, Jesus Christ. By dwelling place. Even though this place here that I built, you have a dwelling place. Heaven. And when thou hearest, forgive. I have a God that can forgive. I have a God that says, if you confess your sins, I am faithful and just God speaking to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from your iniquity. Other gods, religions, grew up, well, maybe. Ask anybody in religion, do you know for surety? No, I don't know. I think so. I'm a good person. Good parents is not the answer. God, Lord Jesus, I am sorry for my sins. I put in the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. I, I battle this sin daily, Lord, Lord God, this time I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. Satan goes up to the throne. Look at that sin. What sin are you talking about? It's under the blood. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. It's a wonderful God. Alright, verse 31 to 32. Two verses. If any man trespass against his neighbor. Ooh, Solomon's getting into judgment now. He says, Lord God, give me wisdom that I may judge the children of Israel. I don't know if we're going to be finished with this today. He says, God... If there comes judgment, I am seeking you to jump down and answer. If somebody has defrauded his neighbor, which is against the law, that's a law thing, an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, I so help me to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. I'll pay that payment. I'll do that thing. Solomon speaks much about oaths. And an oath come before thy altar in this house. So Jesus, what did he say? If thou has offended your brother, I'm not quoting the verse verbatim. He said, before you bring that gift to the altar, you better go back to your brother and get it right. Going back to 1 Kings 8. Going back to Solomon's prayer. Don't you bring that altar if you're not right with your brother. Jewish, 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 Jewish. I don't bring an animal to the altar. I bring the blood of Jesus Christ and repentance mean also. Not only do I repent of my sin, but I go make it right with the brother. I don't bring animals. Matthew is Jewish. But this is where Jesus is saying, before you bring your altar, I mean, before you bring your gift to your altar, if you offended your brother, then, hast, then hear thou in heaven. 
and do. And judge thy servant. Imagine someone going up to God saying, Judge not, you should be judged. Condemning. That only shows up in Acts 13, 27. Two times in the Bible. Don't condemn me. Condemning the wicked. Well, all judgment has not been fair in this world. People who are wicked have got away with it. Wait till God gets a hold of them. God will judge them. To bring his way upon his head out and justifying the righteous that's the righteous god that's the god that solomon said hey i want wisdom and god when this judgment comes to my court i want you to take over that case i want you to use my mouth for inspiration for the judgment that comes from you to give him according to his righteousness now my righteousness today is jesus christ we're going to go through some details here now. When thy people Israel be smitten down before their enemy, they lose, they're losing the battle because they have sinned against thee. So loss and death may be because you sinned against the Lord. Not always, but that's a cause. And shall turn again to thee and confess thy name, and pray and make supplications unto you. They're in a battle. They're losing. Oh, Lord God, we sin. We are acknowledging our sins. We're turning for our sins. We want to get right. We want to come back to you, Lord. We want your favor. You have done right. We have sinned. Then hear thou from heaven. Now, that's where his ears would be closed. At sin. And forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again to the land which thou gavest unto their father. Now, that's not church. I don't have a land. The Jews do. And they've been taken out of the land because of sin. Their enemies have overpowered them because of sin. And if they get right, Nehemiah, Ezra, bring them back, Lord. Under Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah and Ezra, they got right. 35 and 36. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain, weather conditions could be on your sin against God. Not always, but it can be a condition. Because they have sinned against thee. If they pray toward this place, there's the religion Mecca, face this way, face that way. Jewish, Jewish. Jewish. I don't care if you're of Abraham through Ishmael. That's not the chosen seed. And confess thy name, Jehovah, and turn from their sins when thou afflictest. That's the only place that word shows up. I afflicted you with weather because of your sins of them. For the purpose I have given you famine, no rain, or whatever, too much rain. That is me spanking your backside because you have, you have done wrong. Then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants. God's able to forgive. And of thy people Israel. That thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk. Alright. America says discipline your children don't do nothing. Capital punishment doesn't do nothing. Solomon, the wisest man ever to be, ever to be wise, of the wisest of the men, or to be wise, ever to be wise. He says, correction teaches you a lesson. And if we had many years without rain, and we're sucking the dust of the ground, and it's because of our sins, and when we confess our sins and God brings that rain back, it's to remind us, better not do that again. A child would think twice if he gets a spanking for taking something that's not his. Better not do that again because it hurt the last time. Wherein they should walk. And give rain upon thy land. So in the Native Americans, don't go doing your raid dance in America. That's not going to work. Now God's in control of the rain as far as you know, the, the storms we get in America, all that, that may be disciplinary for the sins of America, but that's not a subtle thing. 
People are saying, oh, there'll be earthquakes in diverse places. Jesus was talking to Jewish people in a Jewish book. And he also said, we shall not know the times and dates and all that. So, which thou has given to thy people, Israel, for inheritance. If there be in the land famine, and there's been many famines throughout the Bible. And there be pestilence. There was pestilence in Egypt. Because they sinned and disobeyed the word of God. We got the scriptures in Exodus on that. Famine and pestilence may be a reaction by God for you disobeying. Blasting. Mildew. Man, if there's ever a day and age today of mildew and mold. That may be a retaliation of, against sin by God. Or, there are certain cases, oh God, maybe you didn't clean your house a lot. <laughs> maybe you didn't do what you're supposed to do for the season when you're supposed to keep everything dry. You know, don't go blame God for everything. Job 1 and 2, maybe Satan. Or it may be your error. You know, most workplace accidents happen because somebody has done something they weren't supposed to do. Don't go blame God or Satan on your accident. Somebody wasn't paying attention. Locusts. That was in Egypt. And that was for sin. And so we have Egypt to tell us in the book of Exodus. Those things were because Pharaoh would not let the people go. I'll tell you the truth what happened in America under the Bush plan of the presidency. We went against Israel. God sent the perfect storm. We went against Israel. I think it was Jordan. On the, and we had 9-11. And God has shown America. If you go against Israel. I'll go against you. I will curse them that curse you. Go ask Germany. Go ask Hitler how they're doing. Go ask the Nazi party how they're doing. Go ask England how they're doing. When they said that. Oh we're going to give land against Israel. Go ask those nations how they're doing. They're not doing too well. If, the, if their enemy besieged them in the land of their city, Israel, and it will. Why was Israel north taken in captivity by the Assyrians? Why was Judah conquered by Nebuchadnezzar? Sin. Jeremiah. Sin. Sin. Whatsoever plague. Any kind of plague. That also happened in Egypt. All kinds of plague. Whatsoever sickness there be. What was Jesus when he showed up in Israel? There's blindness, there's sickness, there's devils, there's uncleanness, there are people with withered arms, there are people who are maimed, there are people who are blind, there are people who are deaf. Jesus came healing. The nation of Israel was sick. And they're so sick and they're so much been tormented by God because of their sins. When the God shows up, when their Messiah shows up, only a selected few people know who he is. And the end result of the sick nation of Israel. That's our king. That's the Messiah. He's not going to give us uh, 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 bread and, and, and tuna fish sandwiches no more. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. They were sick. They didn't even know who their savior was. What prayer and supplication so ever be made by any man, by all the people of Israel, which shall know every man the plague of the plague of his own heart, spread forth his hands toward his towards this house. So you can spread your hands forth in prayer. Solomon's doing it, but don't do it for a show. Don't boogie woogie. Turn yourself around. That is, that's Jesus said, listen, don't go on the, on the street corner. I'm going to pray, people. Look how much money I'm giving. I've seen videos. They're doing dances and playing all kinds of music. And they put their money in the pot. No, that's for show. But if you see me thinking, Lord God, fill my hands. Lord God, you filled my hands. Nothing wrong with that. Don't do it for a show. Some people amen for a show. Amen. Okay, that's fine. It's in the Bible. Amen! Amen! You know, that's uncalled for. Just say, Amen. You don't have to say any other accents or anything like that. You're just making a show. Jesus said, I don't like that. That's what the Pharisees do. 
and they got their reward. Hey, he said, Amen. Oh, look, look at he, he, he's fast and his face looks bad. You got your reward. What Solomon's talking about. Then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place. Again, heaven. And forgive. We got a forgiving God. Do and give to every man according to his ways. Ouch. <laughs> I hope I don't. I'm going to get the ways of Jesus Christ. Righteousness and holiness. As he got what I had coming. Beatings. Scars. Whips. Nails. Bruises. Jesus Christ took what I was to get. And I get what he got. Righteousness and holiness. Whose heart thou knowest. God knows our hearts. For thou, even thou only, knowest the heart of all the children of men. Be careful, you can't fool God. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, Our heart is wicked. It's vile. We don't have a good heart. That they may fear thee all the days. These plagues, these things are coming upon the children of Israel for their sins. They are for the fear of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord bringeth knowledge of the holy. The fear of the Lord is knowledge. You get the knowledge. If I make God mad, if I sin against God, it's going to hurt. I better not. I better think twice. I better check and see what God says about what I'm going to do. That they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land. That's Jewish. Which thou givest our fathers Jewish. And that's what they're fighting over, over there right now. The Arabians say we're of Abraham. Yes. Wrong son. The land grant goes to Isaac, not Ishmael. It doesn't go to any of Keturah's sons. He gave them gifts and sent them away from Isaac. Moreover, concerning the stranger, that's me. That would be the Queen of Sheba. That would be that Ethiopian, that was a eunuch of Ethiopia. That would be Naaman with the leprosy. That is not of the, thy people Israel. But cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. That man in Ethiopia. Acts chapter 8. Look at that. That's exactly what that Acts chapter 8. He come from a long way off. For the name of God. Wouldn't it be great? You know, I don't know how much time Philip had. But we had Philip say, hey, before I take off. Let me show you, you in Kings. For they shall hear of thy great name. Have you heard of the great name of God? Jesus? Jehovah saves? And of thy strong hand. He's got a strong hand. At his right hand, the strongest hand ever. It conquered death. It conquered sin. He has given me eternal life. That which sits at the right hand of God. And of thy stretched out arm. That arm and that hand. Look what the destruction it did to Egypt. When he shall come and pray towards his house. So there are Gentiles that come and pray towards Israel in the name of Jehovah, not Allah, or whatever baloney you got. Oh, can't say baloney. They don't allow pygmy. Sorry. Neither the Jews, but I respect the Jews. I don't respect religion. I will not have a bologna sandwich in front of a, uh, a Jew because it's against their law that they believe right now. They don't know Jesus. If I had a Muslim, I'd sit down and have a bologna sandwich all I want. You say, that's cruel. That's religion. I've been in religion. Religion doesn't do nothing. I would eat that book. Hey, look, I got freedom. I'm going to heaven. What about you? Hear thou in heaven to thy dwelling place. And do according to all that the stranger calleth. That's the first time that word shows up. Calleth to thee. For that all people of the earth may know thy name. Now how many times did that eunuch of Ethiopia go back and forth? I don't know. But don't you think that last time when he showed up and he met Philip and the Holy Spirit. And got saved by Jesus Christ. Don't you think that he went back to Ethiopia and tell him the great news of the great name, the great God and Savior? 
You ask any man, I've asked two of them that missionaries in Ethiopia. I've asked two of them. That man in Acts chapter 8 is a strong testimony even today in Ethiopia about that man coming back and witnessing Jesus. Still today, that man in that story is there. And, they, and that they may know that this house is not there today. It's gone. Which I have built it. It can't be Nehemiah's. It can't be the one that Jesus was in because the one that Solomon built was destroyed. Which is called by thy name. Alright? Let's stop there for a moment. The temple called by thy name. For Jews. And let me stop. But let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16. Before we continue on. Let's look at this. I spoke last night about temples. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. There are churches out there, Baptist church, they call themselves temples. 6, 16, 2 Corinthians. And what agreement has the temple of God, okay, temple of God, with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, look at that, and walk with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Where Solomon prays about that temple, he says, God be here, be in this building. When the Jews meet you, when they pray towards this place, Lord, be here. In the New Testament, on this side of Calvary, by Jesus Christ, that temple, that sanctuary, that holy of holies is me. I don't need to pray to Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit dwells in me. I am the temple. I am the living God. I am the child of God. I am saved by Jesus Christ. I have his righteousness. I have his holiness. I don't have to go to a building. I don't have to go to a particular place like Solomon's praying right now. And when you get a church building that calls himself temple, Oh, Paul says the Christian is the temple, not the building. Now you made the building again like Solomon's building. We are the Temple Baptist Church. Well, if somebody would pick up 1 Kings and start reading about the temple, pray to this building, pray to that building, pray for this, this spot, this place, and they would think, well, I guess I prayed to that church building because that's the temple. Not knowing the scriptures, not studying Listen, if any person, any stranger today wants to meet God by his name, verse 41, 42, and 43, he doesn't go to a place. If anybody right now in Daytona Beach say, hey, listen, I want to know Jesus. He wouldn't go to a place, he would go to a person. He would step out of the crowd and say, sir, I know you're a preacher of righteousness. I know you preach Jesus and the gospel. I need to know how to be saved. That Ethiopian did not go back to Jerusalem. He did not go back to the temple. He was right there in his chariot and Philip opened the Bible and that Ethiopian became the temple of God by receiving Christ as his Savior. He would not ever have to go back to that temple again. He has become a child of God by faith in Jesus Christ as much as I am. It's no more a building. So when they pray to their meccas, they pray to their places. No, that's gone. Because the building that God has established according to Solomon is gone right now. Now you wait for that temple to be built, which I don't know if we'll be here or not. And if you want to pray to a place and a person in the temple, you wait till that man pulls that shade back, that veil back and says, Hi, I'm God. And he's really the Antichrist. And he gives you a name and a mark. And if you don't do it, it will be death by beheading. Anybody who wants to know Christ today doesn't go to a building. They come to us Christians. So everybody go to church. Go to church. Go to church. No! You're supposed to go in all the world and preach the gospel. You bring them the gospel. They're not going to come to a church building. Everybody I meet on the streets, 
street ministry, street preaching ministry I have, most of those people would never show up in the church. I bring the gospel to them. And they want to know God in the name of God, they come to a person, not a building. And they don't want to get right by God. Somebody came up to me, well, uh, you know, I'm not really sure what church should I, none. Because I believe you don't belong in church if you're not saved. I believe that. So, th this house, verse 43 of First Kings. I am the house of God. Which I have built is called by thy name. If thy people, Jewish, go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, Jerusalem. This is Daniel. Open up his window towards Jerusalem and Babylon. And uh, the city is chosen and toward the house which I have built for thy name. What's the problem with Daniel? Open up this window and pray into the Jerusalem right now. There is no more house. It's been destroyed. The temple's been destroyed by the time Daniel's doing this. When he's about to be put in the, in the, in the lion's den. What's his name? Belshazzar is already having a feast with all the utensils from the, the temple. The golden spoons, the golden cups, the silver cup. Man, they're having a wine feast, drinking to the gods of metals and wood. So Daniel would have to be praying to a city, not the temple. Then hear thou in heaven their prayer. I think God heard Daniel's prayer. And their supplications. And maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, now watch this verse, ready? You ready? If they sin against thee, this is Paul. For there is no man that sinneth not. All have sinned and come short of glory of God. Look at Paul quoting from Kings. That verse is Romans 3.10 or 3.20 or 23. One of those three. There it is. And it's funny how I do not have a note. Of all the notes in the school field, I do not have a note that leads you to Romans. But proper study of the Bible shows me to go over there. And thou be angry with them. Oh, he was angry with Judah. Enough for Jerusalem and the temple to be sacked. And deliver them to the enemy, Babylon. Now notice the enemy. That's interesting. 323 Romans. That enemy is not only Babylon. Assyria. But Babylon and Assyria, the rulers thereof, are also a type of the Antichrist. There can be Jews somewhere where God has prepared a place for them, probably said of Petra. They're going to be praying towards Jerusalem, but they're not praying to the God of, to the God that's there in Jerusalem. That's the Antichrist. They're praying to Jehovah. And that building that's there in Jerusalem is, is Satan's building. So you overleap praying to the temple. You can pray to the wood, stones, nails all you want. It better be the place where God is. So it's not just the temple. It's the place where God has put his name. And for Judah, that name, God will depart that place. And so much when it's destroyed, when Daniel prays, the building is gone. But God has not left the Jew. Daniel is repenting of his sins. The sins of, of Israel. Exactly as Solomon said. Lord if they repent of their sins. If they confess their sins. Forgive them. That's what Daniel's getting. And there's no building. Too many people put emphasis on buildings. It's the God. And there are no church buildings in the New Testament. It's the Christians. And those people, you know, the living room uh, ministry, it went house to house according to Acts. Haven't you read your Bible? They were on, this, on a beach coast with Paul one day having a meeting. Jesus sat in a boat and taught on the beach. 
Go over to the enemy so that they carry them away captives, Babylon, unto the land of the enemy, Babylon, far or near. Yet, if they shall be think, the only other place is Second Chronicles 6.37. Bethink. <laughs> think again. Put to thought themselves in the land whither they were carried captive, Daniel, and repent, Nehemiah, Ezra, and make supplications unto thee in the land of them that are that carry them in the land of them that carried them captives, Daniel, ne as I keep trying to say Nezer, Nehemiah and Ezra in Babylon, saying, We have sinned. Read Daniel. We have done perversely. Read Daniel. We have committed wickedness. Read Daniel. Daniel knew exactly what first king said. Why? He's the king's seed. Daniel had more knowledge of the Bible than his family. Daniel had more knowledge of the Bible than the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. He knew exactly what you're supposed to do. And so return unto thee, repentance, return with all their heart, for with the heart, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession. See the heart condition? And with all their soul, in the land of their enemies, which led them away captives, and pray unto thee toward this land. Why is that toward this land? Look at Daniel 6.10. All of a sudden, Solomon goes off on, I don't know if he knows what he's doing, but he's prophesying. Daniel 6.10. I love talking, teaching the book of Daniel when it's a Sunday school teacher. And that's what the parents did. Daniel 6.10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed against prayer, what are we talking about in 1 Kings 8? Praying. <laughs> Isn't that a coin dinky dinky? I haven't heard that in a while. He went into his house, and his windows being opened in the chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled down upon his knees three times a day, and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. All right, back to First Kings. Now, why did Solomon say all of a sudden toward their land? Solomon, Solomon just prophesied saying when Daniel going to pray, the temple's gone. There it is right there. That temple smells brand new. Have you been in a brand new house? It smells great. Solomon is dedicating the brand new temple. He just put the Ark of the Covenant in there and he's 40 where is it? He's 48 verses into his prayer. He's praying to God and then he prophesies. Daniel, you're going to have to pray to the Lamb because the temple's gone. There it is. And that's where the Muslims and all the religions get, go pray to Mecca. There it is. But they're not Jewish. They're not, that's why I kept stressing every time we read Israel. Israel, I stressed that. You can pray to whatever city you want. There are Christians today that pray to Washington, D.C. and the President of the United States. He and Washington, D.C. ain't going to get you nothing but more taxes and more hardship. I pray to the God of Heaven through Jesus Christ. Which thou gavest unto, the, unto their fathers, the city, Jerusalem, which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for that. Now there's the house again. Did you just see the prophecy? Well, I built for thy name. But that house is not going to be there for Daniel. It's going to be rubble. Then fear thou, uh, excuse me, hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. Years later, and they, they believe Daniel's still alive. There's all kinds of reasons why he didn't come back with Nehemiah and Ezra. But a lot of people believe Daniel was alive when Ezra and Nehemiah. And if that's the case, do you see God answered Daniel's prayer and showing Daniel? He's not in a list of Ezra and Nehemiah. 
Okay, Daniel, I heard your prayer. Well, God, certify me that you heard my prayer. Hey, Daniel, did you hear all the Jews went back? Did you hear that the temple, the foundation has been laid? Did you hear the walls are up? And don't you think Daniel got down on his knees and prayed to Jerusalem? Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for hearing my prayer. This, this chapter goes one-on-one -on -one with Daniel. And forgive thy people that sin against thee and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed, transgressed against thee. You sin against God. And give them compassion before them who have carried them captive. Now, not really with the Babylon, but the Medes and the Persians, Cyrus, I believe, Cyrus or Cyrus, we'll get the two mixed up. Have compassion? Hey, Jews, what? Go back and build your temple. Wow. <laughs> okay. Nehemiah, why are you so sad? You know, I could die right now. No one should be sad in the king's presence. Oh, I had one of them Nehemiah prayers. Like, oh, if I can only go back and build my city. Yeah, how long is it going to take? Huh? <laughs> well, go and do it. I'll give you the letter. I'll give you the material. I'll give you the money. I'll give you whatever you need. Now, is that not compassion? Is that not prophecy of Nehemiah and Ezra? Nehemiah and Ezra. I'm going to keep saying that now. Nehemiah and Ezra. Look at Solomon, the prophet. King and prophet. He's not a priest. He is not allowed in the priestly office. David had some priestly function. He's king and prophet. Look for the men in the Bible. They either have two or three, but many do not have all three. Prophet, priest, and king. For they be thy people, Jews, and thy inheritance, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt. We're the chosen people. Did God bring you out of Egypt? No. Then you're not the chosen people. From the midst of the furnace of iron. Iron's bad. That thy eyes may be open unto the supplication. Look at supplication, 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 supplication. Your eyes, your ears, your eyes, your ears. The servant. Now to the supplication of thy people, Israel, to hearken unto them, to listen, and all that they call for unto thee. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth. That's one of the reasons why they're most hated. The Jews are above the earth. They're God's people. They have more to give answer to God because God has given them the law and the rules that no one else had. To be thy inheritance. The land. They will get the new earth. As thou spakest by the hand of Moses. That's the prophets. I mean, excuse me. Take that back. That's the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. And Deuteronomy. Thy servant. And thou broughtest out. Uh, thou broughtest our fathers. Out of Egypt. How do you know the God? Which God do I believe? Which God is the God of all God? The God that brought the nation of Israel out of Egypt. The Deliverer. The Redeemer. He paid for them by the bloods of the Lamb. Oh, the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. Oh, Lord God. Now that's the end of the prayer. We'll pick up the next part of Solomon. But that's just an interesting, great prayer. I've had people many a time try to imitate... The long prayer and all it is is long prayer and hot air. But this one's filled with prophecy. It's filled with facts. And it will be in the book of Daniel. 